Hi, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I'm a past president of the North American Menopause Society, and I'm joined today by Dr. Rebecca Thurston to talk about something that a lot of perimenopausal women and menopausal women experience. So first, who are you? I'm Rebecca Thurston, professor of psychiatry and epidemiology at the University of Pittsburgh. I direct the Women's Biobehavioral Health Laboratory there as well. And I study, among other things, hot flashes. So, hot flashes. Yes. Perimenopause, menopause, in menopause. What do we know about these hot flashes? Why do they happen? Well, the majority of women get them. Upwards of 70% of women get hot flashes at some point during the menopause transition. And for a third of women, they're very frequent or very severe. Um, why they happen, that's a longer answer to that question. But it has something to do with these hormonal shifts that happen during the menopause transition, these dramatic declines in um, estrogen. But also, there's something going on with the way that the body regulates temperature, what's called the thermoregulatory system, that these may reflect. So that's, that's sort of a big word, thermoregulatory. Yeah. What, what do we mean by that? So our body has an internal thermostat. It's kind of like in your house. And when, you, when the temperature goes above a certain point, uh, the air conditioning may click on. When it goes below a certain point, um, the heat clicks on. We have a similar kind of mechanism in our body. Um, but for some reason, what seems to happen during the menopause transition is that internal thermostat um, is a little broken. So it's a very narrow window, window that is perceived as normal, okay body temperature. And so you have these- So minor changes in, yeah, in, minor in changes. environment? Right. And then you, the, the, what is the air conditioning clicks on. So these massive sweating events right. trying to cool the body down. And any way to predict who's gonna do what? So in other words, who's gonna be that super soaker you know, when I get my hot flashes and night sweats, is it going to be over in a few years or is it going to be over in the next 15 years? I know. So some people have these for a very long time. And we call these women the super flashers. And our super flashers are more often African-American women. Um, they um, are sometimes a different group, uh, more stressed women. So there's maybe something about the stress physiology. Um, but a lot of women get these for quite a long period of time, and we're still working out who those women are and, and how can we help them. So learning a little bit more about what's called the physiology or the pathophysiology of these hot flashes, what's happening in the brain, will that guide treatment? Is there any way that we can get the brain to interpret, give me a, you know, a, broader, a broader window here so I don't do this? Yes, so what we're working out in the brain right now is how that hormonal system, those estrogen changes, talk to that internal thermostat. And that happens in the brain, in the area of the brain called the hypothalamus. And we're developing um, new agents right now that will work at that center of the brain. They're not out yet, but it's possible that we can get this nut cracked and help women. We do know that although women have become worried about using systemic hormone therapy, despite safety data and how much net, you know, we, we now know, do we know why that, which is the gold standard for hot flashes and night sweats, works? Do we know why going back on estrogen will reduce those hot flashes? We don't have the full physiology or biology of that worked out. We know they work. We know they increase women's estrogen levels, for example. That matters. But exactly how and why, um, that still remains to be elucidated. So early days, but it's possible that understanding exactly how the brain talks to each other and mm -hmm. sets that thermostat yeah. will guide future management. Exactly. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure.